giving me, I don't know if you guys can see, this is actually giving me goosebumps that this test is able to tell this sort of stuff about me. This is where I want to be, nah, nah, nah. never ever gonna leave, nah, nah, nah. you ain't in unit for me, nah, 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 nah. What's up guys, so today is the day. Today is the day I take a DNA test. You are the f No, not that kind of DNA test. 50% of you guys click this video in hopes I've seen some kind of drama. But now that I caught you out, now that you feel a little bit bad about it, show your boys some support, hit that thumbs up, watch the rest of this video because it's actually going to be a really interesting one so today's video is sponsored by circle dna which is the world's most comprehensive dna kit it's a dna kit that gives you 500 reports over 20 different categories while it does give you information on your ancestry it also gives you information on a lot of really important things that they find out through your genetic makeup things like whether you're likely to get heart disease, whether you're likely to get certain types of cancers, whether you're likely to be an introvert, an extrovert, whether you're likely to have sleep apnea, what your optimal diet will be, whether you're likely to have a low or high tolerance to alcohol, which I think a lot of people probably already know already, but would like it verified by a test just in case, and a whole lot of other really interesting stuff. I'm about to go and take this test. Once I've taken it, I send it off in 18 days. It's gonna come back to me and I'm gonna share the results with you guys. I also have a great discount code for you guys of 33% off. So if you wanna do it at home, click the link below. Also, I would love to hear about your experiences too. Anyway, uh, let's go check this out. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to download the app, create an account and register your details. It's really easy to do. Then take out the little test tube that comes in the pack, use your camera feature and scan that. That's gonna link it all up to your account. Then pull out the swab that comes in the kit and you're gonna to wanna to rub that back and forth on the inside of your cheeks 10 times. 10 times each cheek. But before you do that, and this is very important, make sure you haven't had anything to eat or drink for at least 30 minutes. You don't want to have a freak out when the test results come back and find out that you're part chicken and you have to have that awkward conversation with your mother. I'm just joking. That's not going to happen. But seriously, 30 minutes, guys. Next, you got to snap the top of the stick, put the top back on the test tube, shake it up. I personally choose to shake mine like a margarita, but you can shake yours however you like. And you're going to mail it back to them and in 18 days, you'll get your results. So let's see what my results are. I just got a notification and my test results have come back. So I'm really excited to check them out i'm gonna go through them with you guys so let's see what my dna results say about me all right what are we gonna do first behavioral traits you know what that sounds really interesting so it says alcohol addiction less likely i very rarely drink i'm not big on drinking so that one is pretty accurate altruism more likely based on your genetic results you are more likely to be altruistic researchers determined that 30 to 60 percent of altruistic tendencies such as helping strangers or donating to charity can be explained by genetics i am somebody who loves helping other people parents are like that as well I come from a family that loves to help people food addiction less likely i mean look at me guys i'm skinny so clearly you can tell i'm not a food addict obsessions with washing and cleaning less likely i mean i'm a pretty clean guy but i wouldn't say i'm a clean freak studies estimate that genetics contribute approximately 45 to 65 percent of the risk of developing obsessive compulsive disorders let's go to diet alcohol sensitivity i have a normal sensitivity to alcohol i'm actually even though i don't drink a lot i'm actually surprisingly not a cheap drunk caffeine sensitivity this is right it says i have a higher sensitivity to caffeine i can't have a coffee anywhere in the afternoon or else i will not sleep at night based on your genetic results you are likely to have a higher sensitivity to caffeine this suggests that you're predisposed to have anxiety and sleep problems even with lower doses of caffeine ensure you limit your caffeine intake wow this is actually this is giving me 
I don't know if you guys can see, this is actually giving me goosebumps that this test is able to tell this sort of stuff about me. Fat sensitivity. Based on your genetic results, you are likely to have a higher sensitivity to fats. This suggests that you are predisposed to see an impact on your cholesterol based on your fat consumption level. I literally just got blood test results back today and the doctor told me that I have high cholesterol for my age. This is actually crazy. Let's go to well-being. Appetite control, normal, that's true. Bone mineral density, likely lower. Stress and sleep. Sleep apnea risk, I have an average risk. Sleep depth, I'm a deep sleeper. I always just put that to the fact that I have kids and I've learned to sleep through an earthquake, essentially, because that's what you do when you have kids. You make the most of any sleep that you get. Sleep movement, average. I, yeah, I don't really move around a lot in my sleep. Sleep quality, easy sleeper. It does take me a little while to get to sleep, so I feel like that one's not completely accurate. Um, sleep time, morning luck. Uh, stress tolerance, I'm a warrior. Based on your genetic results, you are likely a warrior with higher stress tolerance. A strong sense of calm when faced with obstacles, while you tend to continue to thrive and perform under stress, it's still important to remove the stresses interfering with your health for optimal daily functioning. I do struggle with anxiety, but I'm also the type of person who works better under stress. I have a deadline, I'm much better at working through a tight deadline than I am not having that. I generally get through situations I beforehand, I wouldn't think that I could get through. So I guess, I guess that's actually right. So my success rates, my IQ is normal, EQ is normal, entrepreneurship tendency, normal, creativity, excellent, I mean, it makes sense. Educational attainment, normal. That was actually kind of low, I'm not even gonna lie. Information processing power, excellent. Language ability, normal. So my ancestry composition. So it says that I'm 98.36% European, and then the breakdown is 42% Northwestern European, 29% Eastern European, 16% Northern European and 9% Southern European. Let's see what it says about my physical traits. Facial and body hair, likely normal. I mean, I'm not that hairy as you guys can tell and I think my beard's relatively normal. Body odor, likely more than, what? Come on, man, I don't stink. <laughs> Ear protruism, likely. What is ear protruism? Oh, I guess that's the British genes it's saying that my ears are likely to stick out. I mean, they, 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 they don't stick out that much. Come on, man. This is a earwax type, likely wet. Eye color, likely blue. Hair color, likely light. That's right. Pain sensitivity, likely increased. What? I, I think I do all right with pain. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't like it. Probably, probably right. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a scary one to look at. This is an early detection portion of the test and it has cancer risks and dementia and brain health. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm seeing a clairvoyant uh, looking at this sort of stuff, it's like there's a part of me that would not like to know But then there's another part of me that thinks knowing this sort of stuff early Is definitely worthwhile because while they haven't gotten everything right, they have got a lot right. So uh Let's delve in. Certain genetic mutations can increase the risk of cells growing uncontrollably. These mutations will increase the risk of developing cancer and can be passed down through families. Remember, this only shows your genetic predisposition and does not describe your overall likelihood of developing any condition. If you have any of these mutations, it means that you have an increased risk of developing certain cancers. It does not mean that you currently have or will definitely develop 
cancer in the future. Oh man, it's all in the grain. It's all in the grain. Thank you, Lord, it's all in the grain. It says your genetic results. No cancer causing mutations were detected. I don't know why, I was really nervous reading that. And obviously it doesn't mean that I will definitely never get cancer in my life. But um, yeah, seeing a DNA test tell me that I don't have any predispositions for it definitely makes me feel pretty good. Now let's go to dementia and brain health. Alzheimer's disease, it says that I have a moderate risk. So that's a little bit of a worry. Based on your genetic results, you have a moderate risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. You have one copy of the APOE4 genetic mutation. Your risk for developing Alzheimer's disease is about three times higher compared to the general population. However, research shows that it takes a combination of genetics and environmental factors to trigger the disease. It is not yet possible to use genetic information to predict the exact risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. That's a little bit of a worry. I mean, it goes from average risk to moderate risk to elevated risk. Fortunately, I'm not on the elevated risk part, but even just seeing that I have a gene that puts me in the moderate risk for Alzheimer's is a bit scary. That's something that I would never want to go through and more so I would never want to put my girls through. So I, I pray that I never experience anything like that. Stroke elevated risk, that is a little bit of a worry. My grandfather had a stroke. So based on your genetic results, you have an elevated risk of developing strokes compared to the general population. Um, so yeah, I pray I never experience one of those. Based on your genetic results, you have average risk for developing bipolar disorder, similar to that of the general population. Dementia, average risk. Parkinson's disease, average risk. Schizophrenia, average risk. I mean, I don't have any of those things. I think average risk is, is pretty normal. So the last thing that I'm gonna go through before we end this video is my personality trait. So dive into your DNA and understand how it may influence the way you think, feel, and act. All right, so agreeableness, likely balanced. Based on your genetic results, you likely have a balanced personality that is a mix of both compassion, helpfulness, and competitiveness. That's uh, pretty much accurate. Conscientious, based on your genetic results you are likely to have a balanced personality that is a mix of both being organized disciplined and easygoing and flexible that's actually pretty true um, extroversion likely balanced based on your genetic results you are more likely to have a balanced personality that is a mix of both extroversion and reservation which is actually true i like to call myself an extroverted introvert i have both sides to me i'm somebody who is quite loud when I feel comfortable and I like to talk obviously. Neuroticism, I am likely confident and calm. Based on your genetic results, you are less likely to have a neurotic personality. This suggests that you have a lower tendency towards psychological stress or unpleasant emotions. Science suggests that genetic factors account for approximately 48% of how emotionally stable you are. Openness, likely balanced. Based on your genetic results, you're more likely to have a balanced personality that is a mix of being both inventive and curious, pragmatic and consistent. So I sit kind of in the middle. I guess that makes sense. Well, there you have it. That was my test results. I feel like you guys got to know me on a whole other level through this experiment. And thank you so much to the guys at Circle DNA for allowing me to do this test. And some of the, the things that I read gave me peace of mind. Some things really made me think about lifestyle factors that I really need to work on and keep an eye on. All in all, I'm really glad that I did this test. It was really interesting. I learned a lot about myself through it. If you guys want to do the test yourself, there is a link in the description box. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all had a great day. See you guys.